The following problem shows how to solve for the forces on numbers in a truss in two dimensions. The first step is to solve for the reactions. The load on this truss is up here, a force of P of 10 kilonewtons at minus 15 degrees with respect to the positive x-axis. This is applied at point D up here. These reactions at G and at A were solved in a previous problem. In summary, the components of the force P were solved for. Then we took moments about point A to find GY. We took the moments about point G to solve for AY. Using the slope relationship of a strut on this truss, we were able to solve for GX. And then finally, using some of the forces in the X direction, we solved for A in the X direction. We also use the sum of the forces in the y direction to check our work. So that is step one for a truss problem such as this. Step two is to highlight the members of interest. Which members are we trying to solve for? In this case, we are looking to solve for members DE, CE, and BE. We'll end up solving for some more, but that's probably enough for now. Next, we'll choose a section of this truss, cutting at most three members of unknown force. There are many different ways to approach this aspect of the problem, but this is a simple task but sometimes confusing to the student. So let's take it very carefully. What we want to do is cut apart, separate one section of the truss from the rest of the truss completely. So we'll have to have our line start on the outside and end on the outside. If you'll notice, this section cuts CB, BE, and EF. So we'll have the top part free and the bottom part free. Another acceptable section would be to cut BC, CE, and DE. A section that would not be appropriate would be cutting DE, CE, BE, and BF. Something along these lines. That would not be appropriate because we are cutting four, not three, members of unknown force. The next step is to redraw the simplest section that we can work with after this cutting. So we look at either the top or the bottom. In my estimation, the upper part is easier to work with because there are only two forces that are being applied, PX and PY. If we took the bottom part, we'd have to deal with AX, AY, GX, and GY. Although we should come up with the exact same answers. So, let's redraw our free body diagram. And I'll label it top. This is point C, point D, point E. Draw the 
remaining members here. Note that that gets cut off. That is cut off. And this is cut off. I must replace the cut off portions with red arrows that represent the forces. Now that I have forces here, this section will remain where it stands. We will label these as BC And that is a vertical force in the y direction. This is BE. In the x, this one is BE in the y. And this is EF. Finally, I need to put in my applied loads. Px is 9.66 kilonewtons, and Py equals negative 2.5 nine kilonewtons. That negative simply means that it's going down. I'm also going to draw in the locations, the rough locations, of points B and F. These may come in handy. Finally, I should put in our dimensions. Six meters. Four meters. Four meters. And the height here is three meters. Now that we have our free body diagram, we are ready to move on to the next step. That is to apply the sum of the moments and some of the forces and the slope relationship as needed to find our unknown forces. Note we have one, two, three, four unknown forces, which means we'll have to use at least four equations, plus one more to check. Hopefully we can find one. The easiest way to start is to use the sum of the forces in the x direction. Notice how there is only one unknown in the x direction. And what's more, there's only one known in the x direction. So for these two, Take sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero equals px plus be in the x direction so zero equals nine point six six kilonewtons plus b Ex and putting B E X on the other side, multiplying through by a minus one, 
BEX equals 9.66 kilonewtons to the left. Next up is to apply our slope relationship for, for a strut which is loaded in only two pins so it is not in bending. We have a relationship that states that the forces, in this case BEY and BEX, are in the same direction as the slope. So that means the ratio of the forces y to x is the same as the geometric slope. So these are distances BEY to the distance of BE in the x direction. Rewriting this equation to solve for BEY, which is our only unknown. We have BEX, which is negative 9.66 kilonewtons. And the distance from B to E in the vertical direction is 6 meters. The distance from B to E in the horizontal direction is 8 meters. Meters cancel out. 6 eighths is 3 quarters. end up with negative 7.24 kilonewtons. That minus means that the force is going down and both of these are coming out of joint E which is what we would hope and expect. Now the next step involves taking moments about points in the setup. Make a nice space for it. We want to find either EFY or BCY. Now we should choose our point carefully, but it should be fairly straightforward. Remember that BEX and BEY are simply the components of a force BE that is going straight along this strut BE and going straight through joints B and joints E. If I choose either joint B or joint E I can eliminate BEX and BEY together because they're just going straight through those points and there's no moment arm. Likewise, BCY is going through joints B and C and EFY is going through joints E and F. So I can take moments about any point I choose in the plane and it makes the most sense to take moments about either E or B. I take moments about E that will eliminate BEX, BEY, and EFY, any force with the letter E in it. If I take moments about B, I will eliminate BCY, BEX, and BEY, and thus be able to calculate EFY. So we'll take moments about B. The question a student might ask is, how can we take moments about B if we cut it off? 
Again, we can take moments about any point anywhere in the plane, not just, in this case, C, D, or E. We can take them anywhere. I'm going to sum the moments about point B. They must equal 0. Eliminating BCY, BEX, and BEY, I have PX, PY, and EFY. Px times its distance plus Py times its distance plus E Fy times its distance. And what are these distances? Px is a horizontal force. It requires a vertical distance to point B. Here's the line of action of Px. It is 3 meters plus 6 meters in its perpendicular distance, so that's 9 meters. Py is a vertical force. So it requires a horizontal distance, in this case, 4 meters to point B. EFY is also a vertical force requiring a horizontal distance, in this case, 8 meters. As for directions. Px is following around point B this kind of direction. So it is clockwise and results in a negative moment. Py is going this way about point B and results in a clockwise motion, also a negative moment. And if we assume EFY is positive, it goes this direction. So the force EFY is positive, and it produces, therefore, a counterclockwise moment about point B, and is therefore positive. Now if EFY ends up being negative, we will know that our assumption was wrong, and that's fine. Now let's evaluate this, putting our numbers in. 0 equals negative 9.66 kilonewtons times 9 meters minus 2.59 kilonewtons times 4 meters plus E Fy times 8 meters. A common question is what happened to the minus sign here in uh, Py, what happened to this negative 2.59 kilonewtons? Shouldn't we have a negative negative making this a positive? These are absolute value signs. Any negatives on the inside here will be wiped away. The direction of the force only matters in the moment direction that it creates. So even positive forces, such as Px, can create negative moments. Finishing this off, 0 equals negative 86.94 kilonewton meters minus 
ten point three six kilonewton meters plus E F Y times eight meters. Rearranging zero equals E F Y times eight meters minus ninety seven point three zero kilonewton meters. Finally, let's subtract E F Y times eight meters from both sides. So this will cancel out with that. Negative E. Fy times 8 meters equals negative 97.30 kilonewton meters. And if we divide both sides by negative 8 meters, EF in the y direction equals. 12.16 kilonewtons. Next step is to likewise take the moments about point E. They equal zero course and our forces are px, py, and efy. Don't have to. And our forces are px, py, and bcy. Bex, by, and efy all go through point E, so they are multiplied by zero. So we don't have to worry about them. So px. plus py plus bcy our dimensions are px to point e is 3 meters py to point e is 4 meters. BCY to point E is 8 meters. Directions. PX around point E causes a clockwise rotation. So its moment is negative. PY about point E causes a counterclockwise moment, which is positive. And again, we assume BC is a positive force, and so it's causing a clockwise moment about point E. So that moment we assume is negative. Filling it all in, zero equals negative nine point six six kilonewtons times three meters plus two point five nine kilonewtons times 4 meters 
minus BCY times 8 meters. 0 equals negative BCY times 8 meters minus 28 point nine eight kilonewton meters plus ten point three six kilonewton meters combining those terms Yields negative eighteen point six two kilonewton meters. Adding BCY times eight meters to both sides yields BCY times eight meters on the left these terms cancel out and then we divide by eight meters both sides So that these eight meters cancel out, these units cancel out, and BCY equals negative two point three three kilonewtons. Notice how we assumed that BCY was positive so that we get get the direction of an assumed moment but it ended up being negative and that's just fine EFY we determined was positive so we'll put the arrow in there this concludes the actual method of sections for this problem the next step is to find the forces and members DE and CE. For that, we can use the method of sections, like this, or the method of joints. One last thing to note is the type of force that is on each of the members that we just found. BCY's force is downward in this section, which means that this f member is in tension. It's trying to come out of the joint. BEX and BEY are going in the same direction, which is good. They're both coming out. They combine to make a force that is causing tension on member BE, trying to pull out of that joint. EFY, on the other hand, is showing a force that's pushing into the joint, which means that member EFY is in compression. Now on to the second part of the problem finding the forces in DE and CE. But first, I'd like to point your attention to the force summary table that's been created. This is all information that was developed in the first part of the problem. Here's the force P applied. Notice that it's neither in tension or compression. It's simply an applied force. BC, 
force and tension, VE, also in tension, and EF in compression. The magnitudes of EF and BC were easy to calculate because there's no X component on those forces. BE, on the other hand, has both X and Y components. So to calculate the magnitude of the force at BE, we use the Pythagorean theorem. BE equals the square root of BE in the x direction squared plus BE in the y direction squared. We have negative 9.66 kilonewtons quantity squared plus negative 7.24 kilonewtons quantity squared we combine these this term is 93.32 square kilonewtons and we add to that 52.42 square kilonewtons. So we take the square root of 145.74 square kilonewtons for a final value of 12.07 kilonewtons. So we put that into our force summary table. And now on to solving for CE and DE. In order to do that, we will make a free body diagram of joint E. At joint E, we have EF in the Y direction, two forces from BE, so BE in the Y direction. I'm drawing it in the quadrant that it shows up physically. BE in the X direction. CE in the X direction, which is an unknown. We also have DE in the X direction and DE in the Y direction. Now our knowns are BEX, BEY, and EFY. So the most obvious starting point for this solution is to add up the forces in the y direction. There's only one unknown in the y direction. So we sum the forces in the y direction. It must be zero. We have DEY plus BEY plus EFY. Filling in our knowns, BE the Y direction is negative 7.24 kilonewtons, EFY is 12.16 kilonewtons. Uh, 
end up with 4.92 kilonewtons, and DEY must equal the negative of that. Okay, next, we could move on to forces in the x direction, but we still have two unknowns, CEX and DEX. We'll go back to our slope relationship, where DEY over DEX equals the distance of DE in the y direction over the distance of DE in the x direction. We're arranging to solve for DEX. We have DEY, which is negative 4.92 kilonewtons. The distance from D to E in the X direction is 4 meters. The distance from D to E in the Y direction is actually down 3 meters, so it's a negative 3 meters. Calculating that out DEX equals 6.56 kilonewtons. So we now have DEX and DEY. Last but not least is to add up the forces in the X direction. They must be zero. And those forces include BEX plus CEX plus DEX. The only unknown we have is CEX. So zero equals negative nine point. 6, 6 kilonewtons plus CEX plus our newfound DEX which is 6.56 6 kilonewtons combine the knowns so we have CE X minus 3.10 kilonewtons equals zero. So CEX must equal a positive 3.10 kilonewtons. Filling in our force summary table. DE in the X is 6.56 kilonewtons. DE in the Y is negative 4.92 kilonewtons. CE in the X is 3.10 kilonewtons. Because it's a horizontal number, the Y component will be zero and the magnitude will be the same as the X component. And all that's left is the magnitude of DE. You can find that by a similar analysis as BE. So DE equals the square root of DE X direction squared plus DE Y direction squared equals the square root 
of 6.56 kilonewtons quantity squared plus negative 4.92 kilonewtons quantity squared forty three point zero three square kilonewtons plus twenty four point two one square kilonewtons they combine to be sixty seven point two four square kilonewtons and the square root of that is 8.20 kilonewtons. And we can fill in our four summary diagram here. This is one example of how the method of joints can be used to solve for in this case, three unknowns. I had a fairly complicated joint of E, where he had a total of six non-zero component forces. We solved for three of them using the method of sections beforehand, and we're able to fill in our force summary table, and DE is left to determine its tension or compression, as well as CE. CE in this case is a positive force, it means it's going to the right, which means it's going into the joint. DEY is negative, and DEX is positive. Those are both going into the joint which means that they are also in compression. Now that our force summary table is complete, we are able to do additional analysis uh, with strength of materials or any other application that's needed.